Women's Her Story Month. <laughs> Women's Her Story Month. All right, so as we begin, we're going to do our um, recorded script, as you all are uh, familiar with. And I will need to pass the gavel to somebody. So, Elise, would you mind taking the gavel from me when it is time to do so? No problem. OK, here we go. So to conduct this meeting wholly electronically, the History Commission needs to make on this uh, Wednesday night, March 1st, 2023 at 731 or p.m. The History Commission needs to make certain findings for the record to evidence our compliance with all applicable laws. <clears throat> These motions that will follow will address this compliance. First, I'm going to conduct a roll call and ask each board member participating in this meeting to state your name and your location. I ask each of you pay close attention to ensure you can hear each of your colleagues. All right, so I'll start off with that. Lynn Garvey Hodge, um, at large uh, commissioner and chairperson, and I'm uh, <clears throat> from working from the Springfield district tonight. All right, David Meyer. Is David here? Thought he was, maybe not yet. Uh, Lynn? Oh, yeah, yes. Uh, okay. okay. David I, Meyer in the Dick, city of Fairfax. I, sorry. What did you need, Subi? We're doing roll call here. What's up? Um, David's email address was not right in the email that Megan sent out. Oh, OK, it's, it's the old one. Yes, yeah, so um, Elliot sent that to me about 15 minutes ago, so we need to we'll correct that. But thank you, Subi, for noting that, and I will make sure that it's fixed generically. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, and, and we'll, we'll do an update contact list It's probably not uh, entirely complete or accurate at this time either. All right, let's let's hold off for any more comments like that until we do finish the roll call. Um, all right. Can uh, we have uh, Lynn? Yes, Esther. This is Esther. Can we have David closer to his mic? He's a little bit faint. Oh, that's okay. David, is that possible to get closer to? Your mic? Yes. Okay. Was that helpful? Did you get that? Esther, can you hear me now? <laughs> All right, I will speak up. Thank you. All right, good. All right, Tammy, Tammy Manorino. This is Tammy Manorino from the Mount Vernon District. Excellent. Okay, Esther. Esther, Esther. Mokala from Sully District. All right, Ann Barnes. Ann Barnes. <laughs> From the Mount Vernon District. Tom Shoup. Tom Shoup representing the Great Braddock District. <laughs> All right, Kevin Bradley. Kevin Bradley, I'm coming from Braddock District. Okay. Sue Kovac Schumann. Sue Kovac Schumann representing the Better Providence District. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny. That came in wrong in the minutes. Okay, Steve Sherman. Yes, uh, Steve Sherman in Franconia, representing the Franconia district. Okay. Everybody got to hear Steve. I am going to turn my cell phone off. So if somebody is trying to get me, I will hope they will fall back onto somebody else on the commission. All right. Thank you, Steve. Um, Ann, okay. Ann Stunts. Ann Stunts, uh, speaking from Vienna, Virginia, Hunter Mill District. Okay. Uh, Jordan Tannenbaum. You know I'm going to have to say this. Jordan Tannenbaum, representing the best Springfield District. <laughs> oh, and I knew somebody was going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Carol Herrick. Carol Herrick, Drainsville. Okay. Sally, Sally Lyons. Sally Lyons and Colchester, Mount Vernon District. Okay, thank you. Cheryl Ann Rapetti. Cheryl, Cheryl, did anybody see her here? I maybe did not see her. Okay. Um, we may come back to her then. 
All right, uh, Subi. Subi Medi, McLean, Drainsville District. Okay, Bob Beach. See Bob here. See Bob. All right. Uh, Russell Brooks. Russell Brooks representing Franconia District. All right. And Julianne Mueller. Julianne Mueller representing the most beautiful, fantastic Mason District. Oh. Sweet. All right, now did I leave anyone out? Yes. The commissioner. Elise? Yes. Elise Murray, Deanna Hunter Mill District. All right. Since David's here, do you want him to take to take the gavel? Since David's here, well, it's I don't know. David technically it's his job if he wants it. Right? Does David want it? David, do you want the gavel job? Okay, that would be fine. I don't have the text in front of me, but that's okay. okay. Lynn, Lynn, this is Janae. You didn't call my name. Okay, thank you. I didn't. I didn't see you on here, so that's good to know you're here. Thank you for speaking up. Go ahead, Janae. Janae Lindner, Springfield District. Okay. And uh, Cheryl Rapetti, Sully District. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you all for speaking up. All right, have I left anybody else out now? We're all here. All right. Um, so I've done the roll call and uh, at, at this point, I'm going to pass the gavel over to David Meyer. So he might be heard to make the following motion. Now, do you do you have uh, a motion list there to um, help with? No, it's not. I'm sorry. Do you have minutes? Uh, it's, it's pretty easy, David. I'll chime in with second when we get to it. Okay. Or well, somebody else will chime in with second, and then you can call the question. <laughs> oh, all right. Okay. So who would who would like to just read the script if they have it in front of them? You, Anybody? You still do. You still do that, Lynn. You you gave it the gavel away. Okay, so that's right. You, that's right. I've given it away. I've given it away. I've given it away. That's right. Now yeah. I can make the motion. Thank now you. you can. Keep me straight. Keep me straight. I move the History Commission certify for the record that each member's voice may be adequately heard by each other member of the board. Second. Okay. So at least there's a second on this one. Is it now, now David does the, the talking. David says, uh, all in favor? Yes, I all thank right. you. I, it takes three Warhawks to get this done. It does. <laughs> we all okay. make the same thing. Motion has been made all and you? seconded. Yes, <laughs> motion has been made and seconded. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, wonderful. Second, I move the History Commission uh, certify the state of emergency caused by the COVID-19 pandemic makes it unsafe for this commission and the public to physically attend this meeting in person and the usual procedures cannot be implemented safely or practically. As a result, I further move that the Fairfax County History Commission conduct this meeting um, electronically through a dedicated video and audio conference line and that the public may access this meeting by calling 571-429-5982 and a phone conference number <clears throat> of 48, uh, excuse me, um, nine, the phone conference ID number is 993-767-333. This is Esther, a second. Back at you, David. All those in favor. All those in favor. <laughs> All, right. made, All those in favor. Please say, uh, aye. 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 Motion okay. passes unanimously. All right. Yes, I forgot to let somebody say that before. All right. Right. So finally, I move the History Commission certify that the matters on its agenda today relate to the COVID. 19 emergency itself are necessary for continuity in Fairfax County government and or are statutorily required or necessary to continue operations in the discharge of the History Commission's lawful purposes, duties, and responsibilities. Second. Second. 
Thank you. Okay, the motion is made Bailey. and seconded. Okay. All right, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, so motion passes unanimously. And is there, are there any other gavel items to before I give it back to you? I don't think so. All right, well, one point of personal privilege, given the uh, adjectives invoked by Commissioner Tannenbaum, I need to advise him that while the Springfield district is, is as he described, he needs to be advised that the city of Fairfax is going to annex his neighborhood into the sacred <laughs> soil of the city of Fairfax. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, that messes up the whole commission. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Well, I wanted to um, begin our time together also, and thank you all for your patience around the um, all the many, many meetings we have lived through where um, we have had to do this script and this opening. And I'm here to tell you that this may very well be our very last meeting to have to do that. Uh, I'm going to jump way ahead to your agendas, which you should have by now, and point out that our next meeting will be on April 5th at 7.30 at the Fairfax City Public Library in conference rooms A and B. It will look very familiar to many of you who've been with us for a while. So we will, when we meet at that time, we'll be able to dispense with the formal uh, COVID opening. All right. Um, now, I had already mentioned that this is uh, Women's Her Story Month, and I, I began last time with a little bit of a, uh, an intro. I just have kind of a one-liner for Women's History Month, so listen carefully. Feminism isn't about making women stronger. Women are already strong. It's about changing the way the world perceives that strength. And I'm very grateful for all the strong women that have helped make the History Commission be what it is. I think most of us know that 130 or so years ago, we would not even be allowed to be on a commission like this. So we have accomplished quite a bit. And um, sadly, that it, it, it took as long as, as it has. A couple of things, other things I wanted to, to mention besides our, our meeting format being different for next time, um, a little administrivia. I'd like to really do everything we possibly can tonight to wrap up by 9.30. Uh, and a number of you have your names on the agenda, so as, as, as snappy as, as we can make it. If we need to have any offline dialogues, we're certainly uh, open and welcome to making them happen. I also want to thank a number of you who were absolutely fervent about helping write letters that needed to go out at the last minute. Um, you'll hear shortly from Sue and from Tammy who uh, helped spearhead a couple of those. And I uh, just want to thank you for the incredible input and passion. Yeah, you forgot yeah, your pen yeah. in the car. I'll give them to you tomorrow. <laughs> I got yours and you got mine. Oh, Lord. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. If, okay. okay. I think maybe we should. We sure. do have some guests. So perhaps the guest forgot to mute. Yes, thank you for saying something, Esther. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so I've said thank you for all the hard work this last month. Uh, I had a couple of other comments, but I'm gonna hang on to them and, and until the meeting keeps, it keeps rolling along here. Do you wanna have you meet for the first time, commissioners? Uh, our our new, newest, newest commissioner is Russell Brooks. Uh, his name is on your agenda. Russell, welcome. Can you take just a couple of minutes and tell us about who you are? And um, we'll get to know you just a little bit better. Sure. <clears throat> First and foremost, thank you for welcoming me onto the commission. Uh, Russell Brooks is my name. I am a foreign service officer with the U.S. State Department. I uh, joined the State Department back in 2004. Uh, prior to that time, I actually lived in New Jersey, so I came down to uh, the DMV to uh, serve the department. And since I've been in the State Department, I've uh, worked both overseas and domestically. Overseas, I've served in places like uh, Honduras, Peru, Iraq, Cote d'Ivoire, and Nigeria. And now that I am back, I am currently on a detail to the U.S. House of Representatives, where I work with Representative Joaquin Castro, who serves on the House Foreign Affairs Committee 
and he's the ranking member on the Western Hemisphere Subcommittee. So that's my day job. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's wonderful. Thank you. We're so happy to have you. And um, this, you know, we started this buddy system with our new um, commissioners in the last few months. And so being from Franconia, uh, Russell has really two buddies. Uh, Phyllis Walker Ford will be one of his buddies. She's still one of our advisory uh, people. She has stepped down from the commission, but working at this next year in an advisory capacity. And also, um, Steve Sherman is going to be your buddy to also give you some uh, background information about the Franconia Museum. Uh, Steve's been very, very active on that. He's been on the board. He's still on the board. And that is a, a part of your district that I think will be helpful for you to, to get to know a little better. All right. Great. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Good to have you here. Good to have you here, Russell. All right. And Julianne, this is your first uh, meeting with the entire gang. So can you tell us a little bit about yourself, too? Sure. Well, thank you. You know, as Russell said, thank you for welcoming me to the History Commission. And thank you, especially to those of you who have taken time over the last couple of weeks to help me uh, get my sea legs. I don't have them yet, but thank you for all the time you've spent with me. Um, I'm recently retired from Montgomery County Parks. Um, my background is in my career, my almost 40 year career was in architectural history and preservation, both in the public and then in the private sector. Um, I uh, worked all over the country, but started off in DC and um, most of my work has been in DC and in Maryland and then when I was in the private sector, I had a job that took me around the country to various military installations. So um, that was a lot of fun. It got me out of the house when I needed to have a little bit of private time. So that was a lot of fun. Um, when I started to think about retiring, I wasn't ready to stop working, but I was ready to stop doing what I'd been doing. And I thought about the things that I like to do the most in my preservation career. And that was, um, resolving conflicts. And I mean, as you all know, historic preservation is just fraught with conflicts, whether it's between developers and neighbors, between architects and engineers, whatever. And so I um, applied and was honored to get in, into the, uh, uh, to George Mason's uh, school for conflict resolution. And I got my master's degree two years ago from there. And I, um, indirectly met David because I was one of the facilitators for the wonderful um, program that the city of Fairfax had two years ago um, on uh, on building the future through looking at the past and the present. Um, I spend most of my time now uh, as a volunteer with RAFT, which is an organization resettling Afghan refugees. Afghan families together, and I spent a lot of time on that. My family, we were also refugees to this country a long time ago, and it's time to give back what we were given so long ago. So I think that pretty much wraps me up. I think I took a little longer than I should have there. Well, no, that, I appreciate that, um, Julie. It's, it's good for people to know you. Do you want to say a couple of, of uh, sentences about your involvement with the Afghan refugee program? Because especially with the conference theme this year, I think that was it would be a good thing for us to be aware of. Um, well, basically, we're, we're this organization started off as a group of volunteers. I mean, we're still entirely volunteer group. It's not even a 501c3. Um, the purpose back in September last year, in 2021, was to um, pull together furnishings for 10 apartments to, to create homes for 10 families and we've done almost 300 at this point and it's everything from soup to nuts mm -hmm. we help families find employment we get the kids enrolled in school we make sure they have um, medical assistance um, english classes you name it try to find cars for the families that need cars and it's pretty much a full-time job um, because it's basic human needs people arrive here in flip-flops and clothes on their backs and that's it so starting from scratch and um, helping them settle in this area. And I have to say, um, Northern Virginia is incredibly generous. I mean, with donating furniture and clothing and helping people find jobs. I mean, we're just pulling it all together, but it's all of you out there who are doing the donating. And it's just, 
it's really phenomenal. Julianne, do you feel comfortable sharing your your immigrant experience with the group? I think they find it interesting. Okay, so um, my family, my parents are Holocaust survivors, and I was born in Hungary. And when you look on my little email icon, you see the Hungarian Parliament. I am not endorsing the Hungarian government by any stretch of the imagination, but it is a beautiful piece of architecture, which is why I picked it. And um, following the uh, revolution in 1956, so for all of you who can't do math quickly, that was 66 years ago, um, almost 67. Um, my parents, we escaped from Hungary through an underground railroad system. We were brought to this country um, by the US Army on a propeller airplane, which I guess took about 46 hours to hop, skip and jump across Europe and land in Gander where there was a ton of snow and my mother was just horrified because she thought this was America. Um, and we arrived in this country much as the Afghan refugees did. I mean, we had the advantages of my parents having a solid education, um, being able to read this alphabet, which is a huge plus. And um, we were helped by refugee organizations and eventually made our way to Ohio, where, which is where I grew up. Hmm. Right. And people from Ohio are good people. I know that. Yes, we are. <laughs> All right, thank you for the introductions. Very, very meaningful, and it's just a real treasure to have uh, representatives that just really help make our commission diverse and meaningful, and have the kind of integrity we need to have to represent the rest of the rest of the county. So, thank you, both Russell and Julianne. Um, Julianne's uh, buddy, by the way, is Gretchen Bulaba, who is not able to be with us tonight. She's working on a budget presentation. Uh, and the two of them will connect eventually. I've also connected Julianne with Naomi Zevin, who was one of her predecessors out of the Lake Barcroft uh, district, and in fact is a, a neighbor not too far away from where, where Julianne lives. So it's uh, the, the world gets smaller the longer that you stay in, in one place. Um, all right, I think that's really all I have with, for, for that. Elliot, uh, let's, let's go to you right now in terms of the minutes. Anything you wanna? Uh, nothing, uh, nothing in particular. I just want to thank everyone, as always, for your attention to detail. And um, I, the minutes were provided in the share folder. Yes, thank you. they are there. OK, thank you. Thank you, Elliot. OK, uh, I think we need a motion right now to pay Elliot for the month. Yes, Cheryl's nodding her head. Are you going to you do that for us? Cheryl? Sure, I'd like to move that we accept the minutes and that we pay the clerk. This is Esther. I, I second. OK. All right. Any discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. I hear none. So the motion is carried. Now we're on to Sue Kobach Schumann for our treasurer's report. And this also was in the um, share file as well. Right. Thank you. And I'll go through it very quickly. Um, we have we have uh, put eight thousand um, dollars in expenses, which is much larger than usual this month. We still have six to one thousand one hundred eleven dollars. Uh, the outlays were paying the clerk. A national trust membership for this year and the uh, cost share of seven thousand five hundred dollars for the mid-century modern architectural survey which is our history commission share um, for the total project so i included from denise the um, uh, actual information on that in the treasury report and the other thing i just want to say is that um, i still don't have a voucher form for anyone to use for expenses for history conference for advocacy and i will try to get that yet again Thanks. OK, wonderful. Thank you. And thank you for your good, very patient work as treasurer, Sue. Thank you very much. OK. Um, let's see. We don't need a, a motion to accept that treasurer's report, right? Just keep right. on going. Um, I see that I have, unfortunately, and not by design, 
not included Stephanie Langton uh, from the uh, Heritage Conservation. She's there. Uh, She's number two. Is she? I didn't see her. I because I was you, thinking that you don't maybe. have her name because we're never quite sure who's going to come. Okay. Um, because I saw David uh, Bukta here, and I thought maybe he was coming in yeah. her place. Yeah, I am. Um, we 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 send different staff members each month. Oh, okay. So, are is are Amy, you speaking? Is Amy on there? Yes, I'll be presenting the staff report for Heritage Conservation Branch. Okay. Um. All right. So. I'll tell you what, why don't you go ahead and do that right now then, David? Sure, certainly, no problem. So we will talk about some of the projects and ongoing maintenance we have at some of the sites. Um, we're con continuing our uh, restoration work at Dreensville Tavern. The next phase of that work will begin on 4-15 of 23. We had our pre-construction meeting today and our updates will be posted on the resident curator website. We're also collaborating with the planning and development division of the park authority to obtain bids for foundation repairs and restoration at the Leahy Lost Valley House. Actually, I have an update on that, which was done earlier in the week. Um, we actually will be selecting a vendor for this project uh, this week and have found a, a, an excellent vendor for the foundation repairs that has extensive uh, historic preservation experience on foundations. So we're excited about that. We'll have another update on that next month. Okay. Uh, moving on to our historic site volunteer corps. Um, we are collaborating with a local high school for a private landscape cleanup at the Brzezinski pro property, which was acquired by the Park Authority a year or so ago. Um, or actually, it was on the 25th, so we had that event already. And our first public event for this season will take place at the Mount Gilead House in Centerville on March 11, which is a Saturday. Okay. And as far as the resident curator program, um, I believe most of you are aware that we did have a public meeting this week to review the next steps in the process of the White Gardens property. And the administrative decision was made to demolish the house with the review of extensive public comment as well as the family's wishes. Um, Laura Grape, who is the director of the Resource Management Division, is here this evening, as well as myself, and we'll be happy to answer any questions you have about that. And that is our report for this evening. Okay, thank you, David. I think there probably are a few questions here, especially in terms of uh, the, 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 the White Gardens, David. So thank you. Thank you for taking the time to, to be with us, because one of the things we really pride ourselves on as a commission is our close and collegial relationship that the commission has with the park authority we've been able to work through the years with some amazing colleagues and so it's it's really kind of special to have you here tonight so some of you i know were at the public hearing the other night at white gardens i was not able to be there um uh david would you take a few questions right now if you don't mind? i'd be happy to okay julianne's hand is up Thank you. So, um, David, I hope you'll excuse me since I'm new to this. Um, I have sure. just retired from Montgomery County Parks in the yeah. in your sister or brother sibling or uh, office, and yeah. I was um, wondering about the procedures for um, you know when when the decision was made to tear down the house. At what point? I guess I'm kind of surprised that had I not gone to the public hearing that I would be hearing about this now at this meeting rather than maybe having been informed when the decision had been made. So I'm wondering what the standard operating procedures are for that kind of thing and how you all came to that decision. Well, first of all, we um, as a branch do not uh, specialize in demolishing historic sites. We, we don't, I'm sure you we do don't want to do that. But in this case, 
um, the overwhelming majority uh, of the public comment, as well as the family's wishes for the White Garden House, which was actually gifted by obviously the uh, the, the family, um, wanted it to be uh, demolished. And as far as notifying you all first, um, that was discussed, but we have a process with the resident curator program, which involves the evaluation committee. And the evaluation committee um, needed to be notified first, and we needed to close that loop, and we made a decision to have that in a public forum. So we, we were pretty aware that there would be History Commission members there, and we obviously knew that we would need to come back and discuss it with you. Um, this is not something that we plan to do often, but in this case, it's a, a rare situation. Um, we really feel like this is the best decision, and it was made administratively, not by the Heritage mm -hmm. Conservation Brand. So, um, and also with the support of the Board of Supervisors. So. Laura, did thank you want you. to add anything? Yeah, no, I, no I, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm still a little confused about why it went through the resident curator program and money was put into it but if, in fact, the plan had been to demolish it. But I, we won't spend time no. on that because it's no, no, no. That, I'm there, sure there that's was, a really long story. It, it can be long, but I can shorten it a bit. Basically, we never had a plan to demolish the house until the last couple of months. We, we, we did not. Um, we were proceeding as if we would have a curator there potentially. But as we looked at the public comment period and reviewed all of the things that came in, it became very clear to us that this was a situation that would not thrive in the resident curator program. So even though we had put those funds into the house, which is unfortunate, we still need to follow through with our decision. So I just have one last follow up question yeah. on that. Um, because it was bond bill money that went right. into the house. Right. Are you all going to be required to return that bond bill money since well, it's not going to be a resident curator property? Actually, it is incorrect to say that it was bond money that went into the house. We actually used resident curator um, outside of that, we used maintenance funds for most of the work that was there were it was about one hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of maintenance work that went into the house that came out of the operations budget and not the resident curator bond. So the okay, so only that's, so what ha what you said at the meeting on Monday, because there you said it was bond bill money because I made a the, note of it. The reports that were done for the house, the historic structure report, as well as the cultural landscape report, those were bond dollars, but we okay. were proceeding to find out as much information as we could about the house and understand what type of investment would be needed to make the house a part of the resident curator program, which we would be completely within our bond rights for. So. Okay. Um, as Thank far as though that. actual Thank you for that clarification. Work, yeah, it didn't go into the house. OK, thanks for that clarification. I sure. appreciate that. OK, I, I do know that at least five years ago it was uh, up for RCP and I visited in, in a number of times and it was a beautiful, beautiful property. And I know Bob Beach at a number of our meetings commented on what kind of remediation was being done to the house itself to make it inhabitable. I see some other hands up and uh, stunts, please. Oh, hi. Thanks. Thanks for coming, Laura Grape and uh, and David. It's nice to to get to talk about it. I, it it felt when when I I was at the meeting on Monday. And it just felt like such a bombshell because we, over the last, you know, 50 plus years of our existence, we've worked so closely with the Park Authority. We have really, really close and good relations and, and always have had. And this was a, a joint project, the resident curator, and of course we're in charge of the inventory. And I just wonder if what, I mean, the last public meeting on this was last year, like 10 months ago. I I wondered if it just felt wrong to to not be part of the conversation. I would I would I would really recommend going forward that if this sort of thing happens, I mean, we we painstakingly 
work with the park authority when trying to decide what to do with a falling down building at Mount Air. And I mean, there's just so many examples of times when we have worked together and, and I, you know, we all know resident curator program is, is really hard. And, um, and I think we could contribute too. We, we've all got good ideas. So I would, I would say it, if we can find a way uh, to, to not do it this way, because, you know, I know that one of us called your office and was sent to public information. And this is, you guys are essentially our liaison to, and we, you report to us every single month and we did not know that this was happening. And it, it didn't feel right. It doesn't sit well with me. And so, so there, that's my comment. I appreciate your comments, Ann. And um, uh, as far as the decision that was made administratively, we didn't really have a choice to go to you all first. Um, but I, I agree that in the future, we can look at how this unfolded. And I do, do believe it can be improved. And I would say again that we really had no intentions of ever demolishing any property that would be considered for the curator program, and certainly not one that we've, you know, invested time, energy, and effort into to bring to a certain point. Okay. All right, David, we've got a few more questions here for you, so hang sure. hang tight here, please. Um, sure. Carol Herrick, I see your hand up. Uh, let me go last. I'm on a different topic. Oh, please. all right. Okay. Um, Jordan? You're muted, Jordan. Okay, sorry about that. So I didn't go to the meeting and I and I wasn't participating earlier on, but I do have some questions uh, and they begin with your your most recent comment just now about this is an administrative decision. So if it's an administrative decision, couldn't there be a change to that process where part of the administrative decision uh, incorporates uh, taking this demolition decision to the historical commission? To the historic commission and, and 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 that i mean i hear what you're saying about this was unfortunate and we regret that it had to happen but unless something is i feel unless some procedures are put in place this could happen again so and this is the body that has expertise i agree with what ann stunt said i mean we could have come up with some other ideas that's what we do and this was unfortunate and i, I i've seen this happen uh, overall, I think the protective the pr the protections for properties uh, in for historic properties in Fairfax County are minimal. Uh, but this would be an important, but this would be part of a of a of a change in that in that uh, situation. I'd like to suggest to my fellow commissioners that maybe we want to think about um, recommending uh, a change in the administrative process. In uh, that you know that allowed this property to go down. That's not saying that it wouldn't go down ultimately, but it seems to me that uh, 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 another question I have is: you said the family wanted it to go down. Who is the owner of the property? The park authority is the owner. So, what, to what, what? Why is it material that the family wanted it to be demolished? Well, we considered not only the family's wishes, which were to not really focus on the house, but focus on the overall park, which is something that the park authority has needs to give a renewed focus to. Um, the house itself is, I don't wanna say an afterthought, but it really is in terms of the park. Um, we had hoped that we would be able to make the house something to contribute to the park, but as we reviewed the public comment period, it became very clear that that wasn't going to work out. Yeah, so Lynn, I would like to recommend that this that we consider um, looking into um, that we work to um, develop uh, some recommendations for um, inserting the historic commission into decisions, administrative decisions such as this one. Okay. It sounds like you're making a motion. <laughs> sure. yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. So I'd like to move that the historic commission 
um, uh, develop um, or, or create a committee to look into the possibility of um, uh, inserting the commission uh, in these in the this particular process. I don't know what exactly the name we want to call it, but this this process uh, prior to the demolition of any properties uh, owned by um, David, who's the owner of the Park Authority? By the Park Authority. The Park Authority. Yeah, by the Park Authority. Jordan. Yes, Mister. You mean the Fairfax County History Commission? Yes, I do. Let, let's have that recorded properly. You said the Historic Commission. So the Fairfax County History Commission. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, okay. I I second the motion. This is Tammy. Okay. All right. Discussion. Um, I can jump in with discussion. I had my hand raised. Yes, um, you did. I was going to call on you next, but that's, it's good, good timing. Time. Um, good timing. Um, <laughs> I appreciate. Um, I appreciate David coming to the meeting here, and and Laura as well, and um and the thoughtful comments of other um, commission members too. Um, I agree, and I you know I I agree with what Jordan just said. Is we we could have ended up in the same place. That's entirely possible. Um, but what's important here, I think, is the process. And I think we can kind of come to agreement that the process um, this time was not really what it has been in the past and probably not what we want going in the future. And so I think those are some questions that we need to have answered is why, why did it, how did it work this time and why? Um, I think those are very reasonable um, things to investigate. So um you know, and so I do support um, Jordan's motion. Okay. Any other comments? I'm seeing um, Subi's hand is up. And oh, David, I, uh, I'll, I'll come back to you, David. I apologize. I did see your hand up before. Subi, you're muted. So um, just a comment on the motion. Um, uh, Jordan suggested that we form a committee I'm assuming an ad hoc committee to discuss how this, how we are going to be inserted into this process. Uh, my question is, do we need to stand up another committee or can we do it within the R existing RCP program or, or anything like that? Okay, so you're asking a question. Mm -hmm. uh, see, is, is Bob Beach here? Right now, I did not see his name earlier. I can speak to that. I'm not a member of the committee, but I was on the work group that that selected the properties and also helped formulate the policy. Mm -hmm. the, the History Commission's resident curator pro committee has not really met in the last five or six years. Whenever, whenever it was that the work group finished its work. So it's not really a, a, a going concern. So I think it would be best to recruit an ad hoc committee of people who are interested in the subject now, which should include Bob Beach. Yeah. Um, also, I think I think only the three of them are left. So we, we need they would need more people anyway, because I believe Bar Barbara Nafe was on that committee. She was. Yes. Okay, got some good ideas floating around here. Tammy, your hand is still up. Do you have more to say to add? Not, not? okay, David, David Meyer. I, I hate to get too bureaucratic about this, but um, I am assuming that the Park Authority has some internal uh, administrative guidelines for how these decisions are made and how these properties are managed and how these decisions work through their own organization towards a, a toward a resolution. Um, I think Elise's comments are also cogent because we've, we we ought to take a look at the resident curator program. Those steps and guidelines that are established make it clear that, that the history commission is part of the critical path of the of the milestones towards getting it taken care of. Um, but my and so I'm a little bit puzzled as to do we have some guidelines in the resident curator program and then are they separate and distinct from however the uh, the 
park authority operates. I don't know. Maybe the park authority doesn't have, you know, maybe it's a lean, mean organization and doesn't have all those bureaucratic administrative guidelines. Maybe there is something internal that, that guides them. Either way, I agree with what Tammy said and, and Elise said about the, the need to ensure that the history commission is, is, is irrefutably in that critical path of, of milestones and decision making for consultation, input, et cetera, um, and not at the last minute either. It ought to be early on. Okay, and, and, and thank you for those comments, David. I just, <clears throat> having sat on the commission for over 22 years, I can tell you that when demolitions have been on the horizon in the past, there has been a very um, intentional and respectful and balanced conversation with our commission uh, that plans were made if things were really at the point of, of, of no return for photography to happen, for a survey to be done, for something that would have in fact um, formalized the existence of the property that was there so that at least into perpetuity there was some evidence of it uh, from a historical standpoint. And I have appreciated when that has been done. Um, and it's also a, it's, it, it's been also done within enough window of time for commissioners to go out and walk the property and just be able to, to see it often with a guiding hand from the park authority, uh, somebody to provide a tour. So uh, I, I do know in the past that this this theme of partnership has been very, very strong. And I, I can certainly sympathize and empathize with the commissioners that have spoken this evening that it, it, it feels like a relationship has been somewhat um, bruised. Does anybody else from the commission have a comment they would like to, to make on this topic? OK, I think that brings us back to you, Carol. Do we need to vote on this? I'm sorry. Yes, we well, we do. And I'm wondering uh, if in your motion, Jordan, uh, because I heard it tossed around in here that that we uh, take a look at having uh, at least an ad hoc committee to make recommendations for how this partnership can be somewhat repaired and regained. Uh, do you want to make an amendment to your motion to include that? Uh, well, I, look, I'm open to any any um, uh, vehicle that we can that we feel will be useful to uh, to to first you know research this issue and then come up with recommendations that will ensure that this doesn't occur again. That the that that what the, this that I'm talking about is that the commission is in the future always a part of decisions like this. That we are. Um, we are notified, uh, not post facto, but uh, when there is an opportunity to have an influence on the ultimate decision. Now, if the best way to do that is with an ad hoc committee, fine. If there's another way, uh, I'm, I'm open to that for sure. Someone else might have another suggestion, but that's, the, the, that's what I'm trying to achieve here. OK, so do you want to restate the commission to make sure that the um, secretary is fully clear about it and that we have a clear second on it? Uh, OK, um, I recommend I move that the uh, History Commission, uh, Fairfax County History Commission, uh, develop a, a process to, to, uh, which might include an ad hoc, the establishment of an ad hoc committee um, to um, review the current park authority process of reviewing uh, uh, and um, deciding upon historic properties um, proposed for demolition that will ensure that the Fairfax County History Commission uh, is a part of that process uh, when the commission can have an influence on the ultimate outcome of that decision. Something to that effect. I welcome <laughs> wordsmithing from my colleagues. <clears throat> Do we have a second for what Jordan has just put out there? I'll second it. And I think that we need to have 
says, George, do you want this for every single property the Park Authority owns, or do you want it for only the resident curator properties? I would think any his, uh, any historic property. Now the definition, so I'm not the definition. There are various definitions of historic properties. Um, was the was this particular property an inventory property? Was it on the inventory? And if it was, yes. if that's our equivalent of the National Register eligible property of a National Register or eligible National Register property known as a historic property, if that is our equivalent, then that's what I would I would include. Not not it just was an inventory. Jordan, it was an inventory property. It was not put on the inventory until the resident curator program was launched because it wasn't on anybody's radar back to what was it, 2000 or whatever it was do donated. Don't know. So yes. anyway, it wasn't on our Thank it you, wasn't Maddie. on our radar. Okay. Anyway, it wasn't on our radar, radar until it surfaces with the resident curator program. All properties within the resident curator program have to be on the, on the inventory. It's a definition. However, um, I think that you want to you want to make this broad, the entire park authority, or do you want to make this specific to one program? That's what I'm trying to ask. Yeah, actually, actually, I would love to make this even broader. Yet, I would like like to, a provision like this to be included in any decision by Fairfax County to demolish a property on the historic inventory. Including the school board? <laughs> including the, well, including the school board. I mean, other, other counties have, have really tight protective um, you know, mechanisms. We don't. I think this might be, while we're looking at this, this might be a time to try to see if we can um, move in that direction. Okay. All right. I see a couple more hands up and then, um, but we need to finish this, this, this motion though. So I'm, it, it, that turned into a little bit more of a dialogue than, than a motion. So um, I'll, I'll just say that I, um, I agree with Jordan that, um, that we probably ought to look at making it broader as, um, as the inventory sites seem to be under particular threat right now of development. We have a couple on our plate right now. And, um, and I've really thought about that this might be an issue that comes up during our annual report to the Board of Supervisors, um, as this is a major mission of ours to um, advise the Board of Supervisors. And if we are not involved in the process before the decision is made, how on earth can we advise the Board of Supervisors? So I agree mm -hmm. with Jordan's statement that this needs to be, um, to include anything that's on our, um, our historic inventory. Since this is such a um, important subject, I'm wondering if it should be um, whether we shouldn't take time that during this next month to really wordsmith this resolution really well and bring it up next month um, because it seems it's it's really critical to get this right, and I'm not sure that we can do that in this meeting mm -hmm. right now if we are in, under a time constraint. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think all of these are 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 good are good ideas. Uh, our newest commissioner Russell has a thought, and then uh, I'm I'm going to make a, a uh, try to call uh, the the question if if <laughs> I was meant to restate it a third time. I I I don't I don't know. Um, I agree I, with uh, Julianne that uh, even though this is my first meeting, I tend to agree with the. Uh, the notion that this is a very important matter and we probably don't have enough information and time to decide anything definitively right now. I would suggest that uh, we explore the issue over the next month, uh, maybe with some small group that can come up with some recommendations and then we might be able to uh, to uh, develop a, a motion um, of uh, something that we would recommend to the Board of Supervisors. But as of right now, I'm not certain that I, I certainly have enough information to uh, to go on. Okay, thank you, David Meyer. Um, this thank is, you. I just want to say, this is a, a classic. Uh, this is a classic question that uh, all municipalities have. In, municipalities that have historic preservation organizations, whose mission is to advise them, and. Um, um, 
it's um, others have already gone through this. So let's not re, let's not try and reinvent the wheel. I think if we I think Julian's recommendation is a good one because it will allow us also to look at other jurisdictions who have um, attempted to wrestle with this to say what is the what is the appropriate role of that historic organization in terms of advising a um, an elected body that ultimately makes these decisions. Um, everybody does it somewhat differently. I know Alexandria does it differently than Arlington. Arlington does it differently than, than uh, Fairfax and others. And the city of Fairfax has struggled with this as well. So yes, let's take the time, not only to think this thing through, but also to possibly look at other jurisdictional experiences and paradigms that we might say, well, this will work for us or that that may not work for us. Okay. All right. Well, as as chair, I'm going to recommend that we create an ad hoc committee to address this, that we do some due diligence in terms of what is handled in our um, uh, general geographic area and be able to come back with uh, some wordsmithed uh, kind of focused wording for next month's meeting. David, Glenn, you would have you to mind? take care of the motion. You've got a motion here. You've got to take care of that. I, do, I can anybody tell me again what the motion is? I don't think we all know. It's it turned the, into the, the, the secretary should have the motion. The, the clerk can Jordan have withdraw? The I, I can read the motion back if, if you would like. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Go down. Down. The, the motion as it currently stands made by Commissioner Tannenbaum reads, I move that the Fairfax County History Commission develop a process that may include an establishment of an ad hoc committee to review the current park authorities process of reviewing and deciding upon historic properties proposed for demolition. Um, that, that is the way the motion currently stands. There was discussion following the motion regarding whether or not the, the mention of the park authority specifically would be brought in. Okay, so let's incorporate it into the, the motion. All right, thank you, Elliot. So a second to that then? We had a second. I already seconded it. Okay. I seconded I it and then I commented. Okay, all right. There, there was so much dialogue. I wanted to make sure everybody was was clear because I wasn't quite clear anymore what the, what the actual motion was. All right, so since the motion has been seconded all in favor say aye aye okay we're aye. We're, we're we're voting on creating an ad hoc committee made by uh, a motion aye 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 aye, aye. aye. okay any nays nay oh. Nay. How many nays was that? Lynn, do you want to take a roll call vote? Now we've got three out of uh, three nays. So the I mean the eyes do have it. Um, I only so voted pass. nay to, for the purposes of suggesting an alternative simpler <laughs> wording. I counted five nays. Could we take a roll call vote, please? All right, let me make sure I've got everybody here that needs to be here that's voting. Um, <clears throat> all right, David Meyer. Yes. Sue Kovat Schumann. Yes. Ann Stunts. Yes. Ann Barnes. Yes. Kevin Bradley. Yes. Russell Brooks. Nay. Bob Beach, I do not think is here. Neither is Gretchen. Carol Herrick. Uh, nay. Okay. Janae. Yes. Okay. Sally Lyons. Yes. Tammy Manorino. Yes. Esther McCollum. Yes. 
Subi? Yes. Elise? Yes. Julianne? Am I allowed am I allowed to abstain? <laughs> no. I I am allowed to abstain. I abstain. Okay. Uh Cheryl Ann Repetti. I have to recuse myself from this discussion and I abstain. Um oops and okay. I'm not done. We're not done. Just to explain, I work for the Fairfax County Park Authority to the new members. Okay. Uh Tom Shoup. Yes. Steve Sherman. Uh, nay. Jordan. Tenable. Yes. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. Did I leave anybody out? I don't think I did. Your vote, Lynn. I'm, I'm an, uh, a, a yes also. So we have 14 uh, yeses and one, two, three. Three no's. <laughs> four. We have four, four no's and two abstains. So the motion does carry. Um, let's see. David, would you have the bandwidth to be able to head up an ad hoc committee and help facilitate uh, some healthy dialogue around how we can craft some meaningful processes in order to work with the. Uh... Sure. OK, all right. Now what I'm going to do is. Are, are you all able to access the chat box? Sometimes it's closed. If you are interested, and Elliot, you and I will have to figure this out. If you are interested on serving on this com on this ad hoc committee, will you please write your name in the chat box? Okay. We'll see. You can have the rest of the evening to to decide if this is something you want to, want to do. Okay. All right. I know this was a very um, Difficult conversation and is is David still here? Uh, David Bukta, is he still here? I had two questions for yes. him. I'm still okay. here. Happy, happy to okay. answer questions. OK, all right. I, I just don't see you on your screen, but David, I do want to say and, I, and the word I would hope you'll be able to leave here tonight with is is the word partnership. You know, I'm brand new as this uh, commission's chairperson and it is my fervent hope and desire that we work not only with the park authority, but with the school board, with the board of supervisors uh, in as respectful and a reciprocally communicative fashion as we possibly can. I know that's not easy sometimes. I know it's hard to perfect at times, but that is my personal interest. So between you and I, Maybe at some point in time in the not too distant future, we can sit down and, and, and have a good conversation in this regard. I would very much welcome that. Um, commissioners, this was not an easy conversation. And I herald you for staying with it, for being patient, for being comfortable, voicing different opinions that might not match the others. And I just want to say that you all have done a beautiful job this evening trying to help us move forward on an issue that is near and dear really to all of us. So thank you very much. Um, Carol, you said you had some comments for David. I have uh, two two quick questions. One, David, uh, when do you anticipate the Drainsville Tavern being, say, open to the public? Oh, um, open to the public is uh, a bit of a hard question to answer. We we won't finish the Drainsville Tavern until later this year, probably around September, October range. Uh, after that, then we will consider it for the resident curator program potentially, and it may or may not become a commercial venture. Uh, I doubt if it's a good residence. I don't see that, but I do see an opportunity for some type of business, whether it's a nonprofit or potentially another enterprise to work out there. 
So I would say, Carol, you might look for something in 24, uh, probably the latter part of 24. But as far as open to the public, um, the site is not open to the public. OK, thank you. The second question is the Brzezinski property. I yep. didn't quite understand what you were saying regarding that. Well, the Park Authority acquired it some time ago, which you may be aware. Sure. Um, we have just uh, organized a landscape cleanup there because of some overgrowth, and uh, that's just part of our historic site volunteer core. Um, as far as the house, we are not currently doing anything there other than uh, inspecting and, and doing some general maintenance. So what is there? Are, are there any plans for the house? Um, I don't currently know of any. Uh, it is not currently in the, under consideration for the curator program. Um, the, I don't know of any plans currently, Carol, no. Okay, when is the cleanup? Um, let's see, going back to my discussion, we um, will have that. Well, actually, we already had it, Carol. It was on the 25th. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it was this thank past you. Saturday. Yes. Okay. Sure. All right. Um, so David and Laura, I want to thank Laura Grape. I want to thank you also for 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 being here this evening. And we do need to move on with our our agenda right now. So stay tuned, sure. commissioners. You'll be hearing more about where how we will work on on our our partnership with our colleagues. Um, Amy Wells, you are on the agenda this evening. Next, please. Hi, I am. Um, for new commissioners, I'm senior archeologist with the Park Authority and I'm glad to have you all here today and meet the new commissioners. So it'll be a pleasure to work with you. Um, I'm, you've got great experience and, and uh, life stories, so I'd like to hear more about them sometime. But not now, now we need to move on. So uh, <laughs> my, my yeah. one, uh, of course, please read the memo that's in the share file drive, um, but I'm going to go ahead and plug for my friend Sally Lyons, but also myself, uh, Friends of Fairfax Archaeology, the Park Authority, and Gunston Hall are partnering on a symposium this Saturday uh, called Remember Me As You Pass By. It's the Archaeology of Cemeteries. I will be speaking along with some very esteemed guests. Bernard Means will be there. Jack Gary will be there. Um, there are more people and I don't have it up, but great archaeologists talking about um, really some cutting edge work that folks are doing in cemetery preservation across the state. So if you're interested, um, the Gunston Hall website has registration and it's available through Friday. That, okay. What are the that hours of it again? Report. I believe Eight. it is from nine till four. Sally, yeah. is that right? Nine to four? Yes, the house opens at nine and it will run to approximately four. And there will also be tours of the Mason uh, graveyard yes. archaeologist Dave Shanyo, and the house will be open. Okay, excellent. You haven't been in a while. Up, this is Liz. Just one other thing. Um, there is a virtual option for people who can't make it in person. Wow. So, uh, and there should be information. Um, about that either on the website or through Gunston Hall. Right. And the invitation, Amy, I think you did post in our share file. I think I saw it there earlier. I too. did, and I'm going to go ahead and just drop it in your chat too. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Um, Chris, Chris Barbashak. Hi, uh, I'm Chris Barbershack for the two new members. I'm uh, the manager of Fairfax County Public Library's Virginia Room and a real quick marathon update. Uh, Elaine McRae retired last Monday, so there was a bunch of wailing and sorrow in the Virginia Room after 23 <laughs> years of working for FCPL. Uh, but we are opening our position at the end of the month, likely. So if you know anybody who has an interest in working with us or has an uh, interest in genealogy, we'd love to We'd love to have their application. Um, we got some cool stuff this past month. We got a 1967 Northern Virginia street map book. And we also got some cool slides from a house being built in Westmore. Color slides, which is pretty rare for this time. Uh, it was actually the late 40s. And then of uh, Bernie's pony ring in Fairfax Circle. Anybody remember that? Um, so some cool stuff. And if Jefferson's your guy, we got a really cool author coming at the end of the month. 
Derek Baxter, who's going to be talking about Jefferson and his 200 plus year old travel guide through Europe that uh, this author followed and uh, he wrote about it. So that's a real brief crash course report for tonight. All right. Thank you so much, Chris. Thank you for what all you do with us and, and for helping some of us <clears throat> make sure the library can be as accessible as it possibly can be. Laura. Hi, good English. evening, commissioners. Yes, hello. Hello. Good, see you. good evening, commissioners. Good. Welcome, new commissioners. It's good to see all of you. Uh, I'm excited you're here. I'm excited to work with y'all, and I have so much information to tell you, and it's a lot of administrative stuff, and we are going to blitz through it. Everything is in the staff report, including links. If you have any questions about the administrative stuff that I'm about to blow through, email me and Stephanie, um, and we're going to do kind of an FAQ. Uh, yeah, and we'll send that out like at the beginning of next week. If you have any questions, I assume that there will be a lot. As we know, we are going back in person. Okay, let's start with the fun things. Our African-American Context Study, the final draft survey report is available online on our website. The link is in my staff report. On Monday, uh, the 6th of March, which is this coming Monday at 6.30 p.m., there is a virtual meeting uh, for everyone to attend and um, hear the comments and see the report and see it's all hosted by the Virginia SHPO, the uh, VHR. Uh, I wholly invite you to in, uh, to attend it and uh, see what other people have to say about African-American resources in Fairfax County. Um, the Mid-Century Modern Survey last week with DPD staff met with VHR and uh, our Dovetail consultants, and we are ready to kick off. They're, the consultants are starting to do the archival research, and we will be updating you as that project moves along. Other items. So uh, one of our uh, one of our uh, uh, planners, Grace Davenport, as y'all know her, um, she has accepted a position with the Maryland SHPO, and her last day with us will be this Friday. So if you are so inclined, uh, you know, reach out to Grace and congratulate her. We're, we're very thrilled for her, and we're excited to see where she goes with planning and preservation in the future. Okay, um, next, the uh, uh, Fairfax County is looking for public input on um, an ec economic visioning statement for Lake Ann area of Reston, the birthplace of Reston. Um, there is a link to a survey uh, that the uh, that Governor Governor that Supervisor Acorn uh, has put together for residents. So please take the time if you are, again, inclined to uh, check out that survey. Um, the Air, the African-American Markers Program. So on February 7th, the Board of Supervisors celebrated all of the participants of the African-American Markers Program. The, um, the students, the faculty and staff, the uh, folks who submitted um, uh, 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 names and places for potential markers. I have uh, submitted a link in the staff report uh, to the video of it. I wholly, wholly recommend you guys watch it. It is adorable and will really make you proud of Fairfax County and get um, interested in civics if you aren't already interested in civics. Um, they, they did a wonderful job and we're very proud of the students. Um, also, Stephanie developed the, uh, the exhibit that is housed at the Government Center that is about the African American markers program. So I also invite you to go check that out. She did a wonderful job and it's a great um, it's a, a great snippet of what the program is and, and all of the uh, markers that are going to come in. Um, the review committee for the text of the markers met on February 27th, and we have five of six approved at this point. Um, the final marker draft text will be discussed on the next meeting, which is uh, March 14th. And I want to thank you all for taking a look at that National Register nomination for a Drover's Rest uh, and getting your comments back to us. So, okay, here are the administrative things. And again, if you have questions, send them to me and Stephanie. We will condense it down and send out a list of FAQs. I'm certain that you all are going to have overlapping questions on this. Um, as you guys know that Fairfax County, we found out um, literally a month ago uh, at our last meeting, has switched from share file to Ignite. And I'm presuming since I didn't hear a lot of questions today that you all figured out the Ignite download upload Yes. Kind okay, of, great. Kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. I know. Kind of. Well, did we ever figure out share file? You know, like it's good, good and bad. Um, so we have uh, we have all of the uh, instructions. Stephanie emailed them out this week. We have it in a Word document, which is in the Ignite file. So hopefully you can get to it. If not, let us know. We'll get you that information. Um, uh, this is important. This is very important. So all of the information that goes into the Ignite folder for either committee members or for, or for committee meetings or for this big meeting are time sensitive and will be deleted after 30 days. So I cannot recommend enough 
that if you need information that's in that file that you all are sharing with each other, that you download it as soon as possible and save it to wherever you keep your history commission information. Um, uh, yes, so that is Laura, important I, and any, so DPD staff. I have a quick question for you. Um, everything that is in there, does it go into some kind of long-term preserve location? Is it printed out? Is it sent to the Virginia room? How it, is any of that done? Because a lot of it's in the share file is important to keep over a window of time. Yes, so all of the information at the end of our history commission meetings, I download everything and keep it on uh, DPD server. So okay. I have all of the information Fine. from um, previous and like well okay. before okay. I got here, all the information okay. that you all have. Okay. Um, so DPD staff is still going to manage and send out um, the the monthly Ignite folder. But if uh, you are a committee and you want your own Ignite like um, uh, inventory, I know that you guys just had a huge uh, a file share that you wanted to do. Uh, email Stephanie and Stephanie will handle that for you, creating that file. OK, OK. So this past month, we had some uh, questions about FOIA and how to remain compliance with FOIA. So in short, any document that the History Commission uh, releases, signs that is in your name um, is public information. And you all, as representatives of Fairfax County, have the ability to pass along anything that the History Commission publishes um, to any requesting member of the public. That information has to be given to the person who has requested it within five business days of that uh, request. And that could be anything from a formal re request via email or somebody passing you in the grocery store and saying, hey, tell me about the Dunloring letter. I heard that there's something. So uh, the best practice would be to uh, provide it to the person who is asking for it. Also let the chair know and also let the secretary know just so that we know that this is going on. OK, um, as you all know, there are a lot of staff changes and moving pieces to uh, the History Commission for the next couple of months. So we are asking, especially in terms of committee meetings, that um, we this is in Ignite and we will be sending out this template uh, to the entire board uh, that any committee meeting that you all want to request that we do it formally so we keep everything in order um, through this template we're calling the meeting notification request and we're asking that you do that at least two weeks before the actual meeting date that you want to have set. Um, if you would send that information directly to Stephanie Newman, we can make sure that we get that on the calendar and we get it out to the appropriate people. OK, here's the last one. It's the big one in person meetings. All right, we're going going back. We know it. So, um, uh, yes, uh, the BACs must host in person meetings moving forward. Um, the DPD staff. So again, the big the meeting that we're having right now, we will continue to make sure that we have a, a place. We have um, a virtual option for those who are attending uh, remotely um, and we'll make sure that all of the files are available via Ignite. So. Um, we will provide your physical meeting room uh, and the AV equipment. Um, it looks like you guys are going home. Uh, and, and for those of us who are new, this isn't home. But for those of you who have served for a while, you're very familiar with uh, the meeting space and um, the conference rooms at the Fairfax uh, Regional Library. Um, now, here's one thing that I need you all to consider and put on your radars. We are set the first Wednesday of every month for the rest of the year. Chris, my man, he is taking care of us. We have a conflict for the May meeting and for the November meeting. So we either need to change locations and find an alternative place to meet, or we need to change the date. That's up to you all. You just let us know, but just give us some time so we can make sure that we get everything in order. Um, OK, here's the big thing. And you all have the virtual attendance policy. We have talked about it, you know, on a phenomenon for a couple of months now. Um, so virtual participation is permitted for the big history commission meeting and for the committee meetings. But you absolutely have to have a physical quorum in attendance for this in person to work. Um, members of the public are not allowed to join electronically. They must be in person. Um, so as for so we'll continue this, you know, we're DPD staff will set up the room. We'll have the AV equipment. We'll have everything that you need to, you know, nameplates the rest uh, to have your meetings. Um, as for committee meetings, the committee meetings, um, the chairs need to, like I said, submit the meeting notif notification request. Chairs are responsible for letting DPD staff know where the location of your meeting is, um, making sure that you have quorum for your meeting. 
and that all virtual uh, attendance uh, or um, all virtual attendance policies are met. So, you know, again, go back and, and review that uh, policy that we sent out. And again, which is also in the Ignite folder so that you don't have two back to back virtual meetings that, you know, you don't go over 25 percent. Um, and the final thing on that is uh, chairs or someone on the committee are responsible for providing that laptop or other electronic equip equipment so that you can do the remote option if that is something that that particular meeting needs. That's the end. <laughs> and just okay. overall for the next couple of months when you all email me or Stephanie, we please just make sure you CC both of us um, so that we all have the information at the same time. Okay. And that's a lot. Wow. Nice, nicely done, Laura. Nicely yeah. done. I think you've got enough documentation we can pull out of the share file that we probably don't need to go into any more detail right now. Does anybody have a giant burning question they would like to ask Laura before we move on? OK, you'll hear more about uh, meeting locations a little bit later on. Um, we do need to make that decision about May and November instead of the first Wednesday to possibly making it the second Wednesday. Uh, it would be very helpful if we could go ahead and make a decision about that now. Um, so that would mean uh, that in May, our meeting would be May 10th. In November, our meeting would be November 8th. OK. Now, Laura, do I, I really should make a, a motion for this, right? Do you want to see a, a, a motion for this? I just had a quick question. Sure. Um, I know we get a few virtual meetings per, you know, per calendar year or whatever. Um, is it possible that we could have those meetings virtual rather than moving them? We're allowed what two per year, Laura? Twenty five percent. Twenty five percent of our, our meetings. OK, so that would be at least three. Yeah. And it's okay. calendar year, too, so. In a calendar. We're already in March. Oh. Then we have used up our three. No, 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 no. It's start starting March. Because starting we, March. Oh, okay, yeah. so it's not. Okay, so it's now we, yeah, now we're not in, in the okay. emergency. Okay. Right. okay. All right. So that was a good question. So Tammy, do you want to make a motion that we just move to the or do virtual? What would you like to 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 sure. Record? Um I make a motion that um, that we meet virtually in um, May and November so that we can keep on the same date. Okay. I second it. Janae. Janae, thank you. Thank you, Janae. All right, any discussion? Uh, Carol, I have a question. I may not be able to make the April meeting and was going to do that virtually. How does that affect these two meetings? Is that going to make a difference? No, as long as you're, um, as long as we have a physical quorum, you can, and you have a good reason, then you can, um, you can come virtually. Right. But right. that's not going to count. Uh, my twenty-five percent is my question. No. No. Okay. No. It's all about you. That would would be all okay. about. Okay. Not not the whole commission. Okay. Thank so you. All right, so we've got a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All right. If, if there is a uh, interest in meeting in person on the one of those dates, um, there's I. It's possible that I could obtain a, an alternative location in the city of Fairfax in one of a couple of different venues. But if it's if it's the will of the commission to go ahead and meet. Um, virtually per the motion, that's fine, but up to you. But thank you for that offer, David. That's really, that's really I'm generous. Pretty confident that I could find another location, but um, okay. if that's not the will of my colleagues, then that's fine. Okay, so there's a, a motion on the floor. Any other discussion? Okay, all in favor of making uh, May 3rd and uh, no, uh, November 1st, be virtual meetings. Say aye, please. Aye. 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 Any opposed? 
All right, that's unanimous. So we will be meeting. I virtually. think you said November 1st, didn't you mean November 7? Uh, I'm just reading what I have here in a note that I have from Chris. Um, uh, November 1st is the first Wednesday. November yeah, yes. 7th is a Tuesday. Right. It, that's correct. OK, so it's the first. OK. Yeah, 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 yeah. OK, so that was unanimous. We will be having two virtual meetings then in May and in November. Good plan. OK, very good. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. It's so good to see you. Um, Cheryl, anything, any updates then on the uh, I-495 SEL project? Haven't heard a peep about it. So okay. No. All right, so we're good with that. Um, Sue Kovac Schumann. Oh, my goodness gracious. This lady has worked so hard to pull together a letter that was meaningful, and you had a lot of good team support for this uh, letter that has gone to the, the school board. Um, and it's 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 gone out. And I, I think you've spoken to your own supervisor about it. And right. we, I know we had a lot of conversation about this last month. So right. you all I should have that. a copy of it. I believe I sent that out just this last Saturday uh, for you all to to have. Thank you. Is it would have gone out late late Saturday, and I've had no reaction to it. I don't know if you have, but on Sunday I saw both um, Supervisor Palchuk, who did a big shout out to the entire History Commission for its work on all the projects and and the upcoming markers. Um, and yes, uh, School Board Member Carl Frisch was also um, at the social that my. Citizens Association hosted, but I don't know if they read it yet because they didn't say a word, but we were so busy with other things and my introducing the school board member who is very big on the safe streets program right now, a very big issue in my neighborhood, uh, having him talk to high school students and elementary students and stuff. I kept him so busy, he probably didn't have time to speak to me about that. <laughs> and of course, much of this information will also overlap with uh, the ad hoc committee, David, because the school board, the parks, they all get money from the county and we want to we want a voice in any kind of decision just like this one. Um, so yeah, I will let you know if I get any reaction. I, I think maybe I'll call make a friendly call to the office on Monday if I hear nothing, Lynn. OK, sounds great. Thank well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm glad you're feeling better. I know you weren't feeling well earlier this week. Um, and Tammy, oh my goodness, you too pulled together a group of people and, and made a very um, passionate letter happen. Tom, your hand just went up. Did I miss something there? I just wanted to say on the Dunloring School Project that first of all, the letter was terrific and it was very great work pulling it all together. I was, there were, the link included to the updates on the Fairfax County Public Schools website. In looking at that, it seems they have anticipated most of our questions already, and they say quite directly there's that they don't they've considered historical considerations, and maybe we'll put some artifacts up, but otherwise it's a done deal. They can't adapt the building. They can't. So it seems very definitive to me. That's that's what I said. It, it seems like they already made the decision. Um, it, it was really sad that the supervisor's office and planning commissioner for Providence didn't know what was going on until after the June meeting. That's part of the issue. We really should have been involved before that. OK, mm -hmm. so that sounds like the ad hoc committee can help address that kind of situation. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else about that? In, in, yeah, I was just going to add on the Fort Belvoir letter. I mean, both of these letters, I think, um, were the result of, um, of really good thoughts. And I think that um, I think that we are setting the supervisors up with really good information to ask the right questions. And I know that in um, in the case of Fort Belvoir, the um, supervisors are working on um, on a board matter. Um, I don't know when it will come up, but um, but that was the last update that I got uh, two days ago. So um, so anyway, I thank everybody for their thoughts and um, and I think we've really provided them with some good information. 
Okay, wonderful. Good. And well done. Very well done. I love the teamwork that was involved in all of that. All right. Um, we don't think we have an update from Mary Lipsy in terms of the AAHI project. I left her a message today and I did not get a call back. Um, although I, I might have been on another call, but I don't think so. Uh, we'll know more about that next month. Just know that AAHI project is an ongoing project and Mary is the point person if you learn of any other information that should be involved and listed on the inventory. Um, last month we talked about this wonderful uh, Drover's Rest place over uh, in, in her area of the county. And uh, Cheryl Repetti put together a lovely letter just affirming our support of this property being put on the National Register of Historic P uh, Places. And that should be in your share file also. That is just it's a one pager, just very, very nicely done. Cheryl, thank you very much. The letter that I got, the first draft from Cheryl came in at three o'clock in the morning. I know how hard you commissioners work. I know how hard you commissioners work. All right. So anything else on that, Cheryl, you want to add? Just uh, Esther, if you have any comments, please forward them, pass them along. So that's about it. OK, wonderful. Um, I'm on to page two now. Uh, Subi has worked hard to create this uh, county list of, of history groups, and she has a live link. The link that is in that is on the agenda is not live. So what she did before we gathered together this evening was send an email out to all the commissioners. So you all should now have a live link. Please check the link and see if there's anything else you are aware of within your districts that is a historic group and add it on in there with uh, in probably the next month or so. We'll probably want to drop all of that information onto our website. Subi, do you want to add anything else? Well, I just want to thank Gretchen and Sue Kovac Schumann because it was their foundational work from the 275th yes. anniversary yes. that we started with. Um, so thank you, uh, everybody else, for your input. So this is a Google Sheet. That means you can go directly into the link, save the link anytime you go in there. It's the latest version, and you can update it and edit it. Um, Tammy and I tested it out today, and it worked, okay? I did get a couple of emails from people who said they tried to get in. Don't go into the attachment. The attachment is a passive document. The link is the live document, okay? And my um, earnest uh, wish would be that I don't have to maintain it, that it would be maintained by you for your districts. So um, I'll be here to answer any, you know, call me up or send me a text for any technical assistance. Mm -hmm. But don't send me information to say, please update it. Um, mm -hmm. That is not the intent of this very nice 21st century Google software. Subi, um, thank you so much for your good work on this. As I'm listening to you right now, I'm wondering if as we get to place it on the website, you could put together a paragraph that would describe a lot of what you just said, that it is a working uh, 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 document and that you know the public can expect up, updates from time to time from the from the commission. Would you mind putting together three or four sentences for uh, the, yeah. the issue of putting a live link like that? Is that even the public? Uh, I mean, I would have to. I, I guess I could change the control. Yeah. yeah. Right now, anybody who has the link can edit it, but I can I could control. Yeah, that. you could you could you could lock that down. Okay. Yeah. And, and we can continue the dialogue too, because we won't be working on that right now. All right, thank you so much. I have um, a question. I have a yes. question. Yes, um, Julie there, and some, Subi, there's, I know there's various, not, probably not too many, um, there's organizations that aren't locked. And I can't hear you at all. Oh, I don't know what to do. Can anybody else hear me? Yes. Um, well, well, I'll tell you later, Janae. <laughs> um, the um, oh, my question is: There are some organizations or types of organizations that aren't in a particular district. So is that the is, the, is there a catch-all or something that? that yes. Yes. Of course. So let me explain how we have organized it. We have a general category. Um, we have a statewide category, and oh, we nice. have 
we have a county wide and then we go into the districts. I'll put that down. I'll, I'll write a little paragraph to describe all that. It's actually in the email I sent it sent uh, to all of you today. Yeah, I look forward to seeing it. Thank you for doing it. Yeah, that's great. That's great. OK, I see some hands up here. Tom, I think your hand is up or is still up. You took a question. That is unintentional. Unintentional. OK, Cheryl, your hand is up. No, somebody. OK, Julie. What's that? My my hand is up. Lynn. OK, is Julie. Julie. All right. Oh, I, um, I saw that and then I didn't see it. OK, that's thank okay. you. Go ahead. Um, so my question was, are we going to be including organizations, something like um, the American Horticultural Society because it's at River Farm and they're dealing with historic landscapes and historic buildings, or is this a completely different type of list? I think it can be anything we want it to be, anything the public might be interested in. Well, so. we did start with a definition because uh, I don't think we should make it an open-ended thing. Uh, let me uh, revisit the definition, uh, Julie, because when we did the first call out for information, I did get uh, inputs like the Army BRAC, you know, um, and that's that's Army, that's not historic, but an organization whose main focus is um, historic preservation was the idea, because end of the day, we all do history even at the family level, right? So where do we draw the boundaries was a question. So I think that if we're going to make this a document that the public can add to, we might want to include in the few sentences that you're going to put on there, Subi, about what the parameters of this yeah. document yeah. is so that we don't, so it doesn't get populated with stuff that we don't want on there. Definitely, but I don't think we want the public to update this document. It'll be the commissioners who would do that. Well, right. then, but if this is a document that the public can see, then again, you know, maybe it should, that definition would be very helpful. It will be there, yes. Okay. Thank you. So, be, and, and to be clear, since I'm on two of these military commi committees that you didn't put down, one is, um, celebrating the 75th anniversary of the de uh, desegregation of the military. You don't want that on, even though we will have a capital area. Is that correct? This is an inventory of history groups. Any group can do celebrate a historical event. That doesn't mm -hmm. put, put them in the list. I'm wondering too, because we'll have lots of anniversaries like this. I think Janae has a good question here. Periodically, neighborhoods, Clifton will have their own anniversary events. I'm wondering, Subi, and then this is something to think about and then get back to us on. Should we have a different category at the very end, you know, community anniversary events or something like that? We, we are, we do have in the plans to develop a calendar of events. Okay. It can be in the calendar of events. We also have a history of uh, an inventory of historic sites that Elise does that I'm cross-referencing to make sure that th that this that this is a group and that those are sites and they are not, you know, they're that they are mutually exclusive. Um, for me, an event is not a history group. OK, we well, usually history groups kind of put it together. Let's see what you come up with next month. And, and Janae, hang on to that thought. Maybe there's a way we can um, cobble together some some verbiage that would that would make make good sense here. Again, Subi, thank you so much for your good work on this. This is helpful. Thank you for your questions, Janae. All right, let's go ahead and move on. There's a, a short um, little piece here about the uh, survey cell tower that's over in the Annandale area. And uh, Julie, Julianne, since that's your Area, do you want to let sure. us know where you all are with that right now? And and Kevin weighed in here too on, on right. This. So Kevin weighed in and said that um, he didn't think that there was an issue, you know, based on just checking the inventory and all. I sent an email to the um, consultant this morning asking them for additional information. I mean, I in all likelihood there is no issue here, but I want to know what the area 
potential effect is. I, it's not clear how tall these towers are. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that we've dotted our I's and crossed our T's on this. In all likelihood, there's no issue here, but I just want to be sure. Okay, wonderful. So you're going to kind of take that on and and, yeah. and finish it off. Perfect. All right, let us move on here. We've obviously already talked about White Gardens. Um, Elise, budget, any updates here? Budget and inventory. I'm preparing for a March 6th financial review committee, and at that okay. point I will have all my data ready and get everything I promised out in the past. Moving on to the inventory. Yes. We have an inventory nomination for the commission to consider over the course of the next month and to vote on next month. Tammy will describe it to you. I thought Tammy was going to describe it. Is Tammy? We won't still... describe it. It's Randall Estate. There's a lot of material in the share file. All you really need is to read the nomination. If you have any questions, talk to me, contact me, and I will pass them on to the relevant person. It sounds like an, a, fascinating, a fascinating piece to add to that. I, I started to look through it, uh, Elise. Thank you for, for making that available. Okay, um, history conference. Uh, uh, ben? Yes, Bob. My hands up. I'm sorry, I didn't see it. I didn't see a little yellow hand. So if I don't see a little yellow hand, I'm going to likely miss you. Go ahead. Well, I can lower my hand. It says I can do that. Um, I would like to let the commissioners know that Carol Herrick and I have over many months been working together um, to figure out um, a particular property, um, its age, uh, and and uh, we actually had the opportunity to have a dendrochronology test done on it. Yes. And I would like to read you uh, one sentence <laughs> for it. Okay. Um, it's in reference to Little Ballantrae, and it says the analysis has shown that the building was constructed from timbers felled in the winter of 1844 and 45. Mm -hmm. The spring of 1845 and the summer of 1846. So the little Ballantrae house is pre-Civil War. Cool. And we find that to be uh, magnanimous to have something in our county that dates by, back that far and is in such great shape. Um, and Carol and I are going to uh, ask the owner if um, he would be willing to put this house on the inventory. So we will have to come back to you and and let you know if his answer is yes. And and of course, obviously, there'll be some work to be done. But um, thought I'd fill you in on that. We've been working on it for many months and finally, you know, got the report done and um, it's pretty exciting. So. Oh, that must feel good, Bob. That must feel, yeah, that's but excellent. all you do, that must feel very good. All yeah. right. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. I can lower That's my nice. hand now. Okay. <laughs> Until later. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Um, um, is anybody else's hand up that I'm not seeing? It's hard to see sometimes. Yeah. Aw, thank you, Liz Quirrell. She just gave congratulations to Carol and Bob. And this, a message for all of you. Thank you, Liz. Um, all right. Let me move on to history conferences. should be pretty, pretty uh, short and sweet. We definitely have the Sherwood Community Center for the 4th of November. Uh, we definitely have Tom Jelton. We are hoping to have Mark Keem. That is still kind of a question depending on his travel schedule. The co conference committee met last week. We're scoping out a kind of format for the conference. There'll likely be a panel discussion of three different uh, immigrants who can talk about their experience. Uh, we've got some thoughts about um, how we might do the catering and the food. We had some excellent lessons learned that Sue Kovat Schumann put together for us to take a look at in back in January. That was we discussed that at our first meeting. And um, let's see, what else do I want to say? We're going to meet again. This is a little iffy. I think this is going to happen with a number of us committees as we kind of scramble to determine where and when we're going to meet. There's a lot of overlay on the commissioners in terms of being involved in different different committees. Um, uh, for the conference committee, I have secured the 20th 
of March at 7.30, the Nan Netherton Room 214 on the second floor of the Fairfax City Public Library. Um, I know there may also end up being an ethnic or an oral history meeting later on that month. Uh, and so I have also secured um, the 28th on that Tuesday. The Nan Netherton room is really apparently only available on Mondays and Tuesdays because that's when the the library is open late. Um, and also at our next meeting too, the conference committee needs to uh, nail down an actual title for this conference this year, which basically is a nation of nations based on that book, but we need to need to do that. Um, conference committee, anything else you want to add in? I think that's it. OK, uh, I have really not anything else to add about awards. Uh, I know that Mike Salmon will be putting forth uh, an award that he, he could not have to last year, so he will be doing that. And I'm hoping that the Connection newspaper is going to do an article uh, about the Jack Hiller Award. I've given them a lot of information, a quote from Marion Hiller. So hopefully we will see a, a push for the, uh, some submissions for, for that award before the 1st of June. Uh, cut off time. Uh, since Gretchen's not here, I don't see anything for semi uh, quicentennial unless anybody else has information. I think we will continue to move on. OK, and stunts, advocacy and annual report. Well, we had a meeting on the 23rd last Thursday and we have another one on March 23rd. Uh, you can read our very eloquent minutes. We had we hit a couple of events this uh, last month that were wonderful. This is a lot of fun. We have a lot of events coming up. Um, and we find we're needing two sets of some of our materials because we have, you know, everything's happening on April 22nd, for example. So uh, we would like to make a motion that and when I'm done with this, then we'll I'll hand it back over to Sue before the uh, and a report update, um, but for the for now the um, at our meeting, Subi moved. So now I will move that we request up to eight hundred twenty-five dollars for two eight-foot approval for this for two eight-foot-long tablecloths with logos. It probably won't cost that much, but we want didn't want to have to keep coming back because we actually need these things soon. OK, so you're <laughs> recommending you've already the, the committee already made it made the decision to go forth with this. So this you, is a yeah. recommendation from the committee, right? So a motion from the committee. So we we uh, it, it'd be nice if we didn't have if we could just approve it under a budget authority, but I don't think we work that way yet. So we would we're coming to the commission for to ask for approval. OK, so Sue and Elise have some reactions here, I think. So what's your reaction? You, you need a second, uh, Lynn, before you go to this question. Oh, OK. Yeah. Oh, oh, was, it discussed? okay. was it seconded? I'm sorry. Yes, no, Sue. No, I was Sue was it yes. going to second it. Oh, I, okay. I seconded it. OK. <laughs> it sounded at this the end. This is wonderful. If, yes. This is wonderful. We have plenty of money. Let's do it. Uh, and and yes. these trade show cloths are they're really expensive no matter where you get it because Subi really researched this and so did I. So it's it's not frivolous. We have a lot of events on the 22nd, um, including over here at Blenheim and, and another place. And so we need help from other commissioners because we can't all do those 10 to 4 things ourselves. That happens to be the same day as neighborhood cleanup and the yard sale for my neighborhood, <laughs> but I'm close to Blenheim, so I've got to clone myself. Let someone else help me that day at Blenheim. Thank you. That's a good play because and 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 you guys who who um, have not been taking part in this do keep an eye out in your own districts. We're happy to support you unless it's on April 22nd, then we don't have time. Um, but but really, you know, keep track keep your ear to the ground when you get your supervisor's uh, newsletter, read it and say, oh, here's an event coming up that I could, I, I, you know, you could be on a table and we could help you. So and, and we don't know about it, we won't show up. 
And aren't there several Juneteenth celebrations on the 17th of June? All right. Um, OK, so we've had that. Motion, so, so we have to vote. Any other? Go ahead, go ahead, Tammy. Oh, just, uh, you know, I think we, we should go ahead and call the question. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All in favor of this uh, $825 purchase for the Advocacy Committee and our public um, marketing. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, so carried. All right, Thank ladies, you. you've got your tablecloths. <laughs> so exciting. Over to Subi. If uh, to, for an update on the annual report? Yeah, so we are talking about the 2022 annual report. The due date for uh, committee reports and updated bios uh, was yesterday, March 28. I have um, all but two outstanding bios, and you know who you are. Um, I'd really, really appreciate it while I'm uh, getting the others uh, in, um, uh, worked into the document that you provide yours as soon as possible. Um, in terms of the committee reports, um, I have most of the updates except for two committees. Uh, again, you know who you are. Uh, please, um, uh, work with us in getting them uh, in uh, by the end of uh, today's what Wednesday. Uh, I hate to say Sunday, but um, but we are volunteers. We don't have work hours. If you can get them to me by uh, the end of the week, that would be great. I'd appreciate it. Um, it's a much easier process this year. Thanks for all the, you know, hard work and uh, pain we went through last year. So. Um, I think I think we'll be good. Thank you. Okay, thanks and thanks for all your hard work on that, Subi. I know that's that's very tedious there at that at the end. Okay, um, Cheryl, anything about the marker marker project? Sorry about that. So, um, with regard to the uh, the the special markers project. Uh, we met with Stephanie uh, um, just earlier this week, or <laughs> maybe it was last week. No, I guess it was Monday, and um, and reviewed five of uh, five drafts of the uh, six uh, markers that are going to go on into the ground. We um, as planned, and uh, and so we are making real progress on that, and we really appreciate Stephanie's hard work. She's gave us uh, five really easy drafts. We just made tiny little tweaks and uh, and we just are uh, waiting uh, some further work on uh, the last sign um, about um, Robert Gunnell and Gunnell's Chapel. Um, with regard to the regular marker committee, we met um, this past month uh, in February and uh, reviewed uh, the Merrifield marker turned that back for further revision to the um, person who's proposed it. And uh, Tom very uh, graciously volunteered to continue to work with that person. And we have a couple of other markers coming up um, that uh, Tammy are in, are in Tammy's uh, district. And so uh, she'll be working with those proposals. And we'll be meeting again on uh, March 16th at a location to be determined. OK, wonderful. Thank you, Cheryl. Sure. Um, in terms of cemetery preservation, uh, that was part of my call to Mary this evening. As I said, I did not hear anything back. Esther, ethnic and oral history, any updates from you, please? Yes, thank you. Just quickly, the ethnic and oral history committee met on February 21st virtually and uh, we came up with some exciting ideas after finding that uh, the neighborhood and community services uh, group is doing uh, some history, collecting some stories. We came up with the idea of finding our oldest citizens in the county. 
and we have some suggested contacts to make and each of the committee members there took on a task of seeking some things out so we can put some meat on that and have something uh, highlighting our older citizens, which I haven't seen us do in the county before. So that along with, we still have a couple of interviews to do that are to be scheduled in April. Those dates have not come through from Channel 6 yet. So now that we're into March, I will contact them and suggest that we need those dates. And uh, we'll continue to work on getting the oral histories and getting the history of the citizens out there, including other ethnicities, so that everyone is included, every group is included in the work that we're doing. So we're seeking other groups that we have not touched yet. Okay. That's our committee report. Okay. Uh, our next meeting will be in March. Uh, we're looking at the 21st or the 20th, depending on the location. And possibly the 28th, Esther. I tried to get some arrangements for you at the library. So let's thank you. Let's chat with that about that okay. offline. I have a quick question for Esther. Uh, Esther, hi, this is Zubi. Uh, do you have, um, can you tell us how many interviews we did in 2022? We did six. In, in 2022, we did six, so five oh, before. It, total, total. How many for our last year, 2022? I believe it was two. Let me double check that and get back to you. Thank Here's you. You're to run it together now. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I, I can help you with that, Esther. OK, we'll yeah. get back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Okie doke. Thank you, Esther. Thank you. Thank you for uh, hanging in there. And, and, and I love the idea of interviewing the older people. Um, Bob, anything on the RCP program? Yeah, nothing to add other than all the lengthy and uh, difficult discussions from earlier. OK, thank you. And I did not see you, Bob. I did not see you at all in, in the list. And I apologize if I overlooked asking you for any input. That's all right. I, I um, yeah, that's OK. I mean, I came a little late, so I missed roll call. Apologize. OK. All right. Well, I'm glad you're here. Um, bylaws. And we had a very productive, short and focused meeting. Yes, we did. Just <laughs> last night. Yes, go ahead. OK. All right. Um, the minutes of the bylaws committee meeting um, February the 28th, 2023. The bylaws committee met on Tuesday, February the 28th. The uh, um, software teams, the appropriate FOIA motions were made. Um, in attendance was myself, chairman of the bylaws committee, um, Lynn Garvey Hodge, Chairman of the History Commission, um, Carol Hedrick, Elise Murray, Cheryl Rapetti, and Ann Stutz. Stephanie Newman from the Department of Planning and um, Department wow. of Planning and, and Development also attended. OK, the committee discussed uh, proposed bylaws amendments prepared by the county attorney's office um, to provide authorization for the awards programs and publication grants. The discussion include whether or not bylaws amendment would be made would be needed if the Park Authority will no longer be handling the history conference. Uh, we determined that 
an administrative uh, that that was an administrative um, issue, and it, it was um, separate from the bylaws. Okay, the motions that were made, the motion that was made was made by um, Elise Murray, and it was second by Carol Hedrick, and it was passed unanimously. This is the motion. It says, I move that the bylaws committee recommend making the word program plural throughout and to replace the word select with the word recommend in paragraph F. Also, um, that the committee shall include no less than four members. Um, DPD staff, Stephanie Newman, will forward the realigned version of the amendments to the uh, county attorney's office for their review. And the committee will review the county attorney's response to the revision. That's my report. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So we'll wait to hear back. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. It was a, mm -hmm. a nice, short, and sweet, sweet meeting. All right, Elise. Anything for M A R B? <laughs> my re my report is in the share file for January and for for February. The only thing that was different in the last month was that we had a total of ten items for the agenda. So we split them into action items one night and had a supplemental meeting for the five workshop items. So I served on your behalf twice last month. Thank oh. you. If you have any <laughs> questions, ask me. It's all pretty straightforward. Oh, that's great. I have a quick question because I had technical difficulties earlier. Did you already um, talk about uh, budget and inventory? Yes, uh, we'll talk about it offline. <laughs> okay, so um, did, did you introduce the Randall Estates? Mm -hmm. Yeah, just cursorily because I didn't have much to say and I don't think we need to take up a lot of time with it. They can read it. No, I actually I included an overview in the share file. So anything I would say now is on that overview. So everybody read that and yeah. and take a look at it. Thank no, you. Sorry, I had technical difficulties at a bad time. No, okay. you're, you're in the pantry. No you're too long. You've been in the pantry in there yeah. too long. Tammy. That happens all the time. <laughs> Um, yeah. the, the uh, information that there is very deep and very rich and very full and it and I look at all the pictures and it just makes me smile. So I'm really happy cool. that that's that's being attended to. Yeah, that's, me too. Cool. OK, I have, um, I thank you. Elise. I have a quick question yes. for Elise. Um, I, sh I should have asked it before or probably I should just call her, but might as well. Um, does the ARB have any role in what we were talking about with White Gardens? The ARB was also part of the establishment of the program, and I think there's some interest because they too advise the Board of Supervisors. So it's really a question of what they want to do, and I will make sure that it is passed to the chairman. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Elise. Thanks. Thanks, Elise. And it's good to see you feeling better also. Um, David Meyer, anything from Fairfax City? <clears throat> um, great progress has been made, substantial progress has been made on the restoration of Old Town Hall, constructed yes. in 1900. It's a 700 and some thousand dollar project. Um, it is, uh, was behind schedule, but in some ways it was, there was, there was some silver lining in the delay. I am proposing that if anyone is interested in seeing the portico project which is about 85 percent finished at this point uh, uh, on um, april 5 we have our meeting at the city library literally across the street from this park oh. so if you want to come around 6 p.m i will arrange for uh a a project manager or our, our director of historic programs to give a 20 minute overview we can walk around you can see the latest techniques for uh historic restoration projects that um 
blend authenticity or balance authenticity with ADA requirements. We have literally moved fire hydrants and, and computer boxes that control signal systems, um, replaced retaining walls with granite tops. And um, uh, it, is, it is very interesting. This was, this was all started because a two-story original 1900 pillar that literally was holding up the front collapsed at 3.45 a.m into the street. Fortunately, no one was there. If it had hit someone, it would have been a fatality. Um, and it's been a fascinating journey. And so this is only the first step of what will become a multi-million dollar restoration of the building in 24, um, 2024. So um, I will put something together and send it out to the commissioners. If anybody wants to show up early, we can, I'll give you all the specific details later, but if we give any opportunity to see uh, a project that's almost done, um, and it might be of interest, and then we can walk across the street to the library. That's good. Thank uh, you. I don't have anything else to report. I will, well, I'll make a footnote to this. Um, the uh, Fairfax Resolves, that all of you are familiar with, uh, uh, was, signed, was signed in 1774, and so the 250th anniversary of that document is coming up, and there's some interesting programs that are being discussed and planned for the recognition of that. There were a number of resolves in the, in the colonies that were drafted and signed in different venues and by different people, but the Fairfax resolves without hyperbole or being blinded by my by being local, um, the signatories of that document are probably the most significant in the colonies at that time. And um, because of that, the, the resolves themselves played a pivotal role in subsequently the, uh, the rights that were enshrined in the constitution. So. 250 anniversary in 2024. Um, this is really more county than city, but um, I'll keep you posted on how things progress with the recognition of that. Okay. That's it for now. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you, David. I have mm -hmm. to say it was such a relief to drive past and see the four pillars back in place. Yes. It, I, it's not quite finished, but it feels so well, right. so much more to it because the pillars yes. were constructed. There was there was nothing under the porch supporting them. So oh. we had now put steel beams under it. I don't know. I don't know oh who was drinking uh, the Bowman whiskey at the time, but the the front structure was not constructed appropriately. But all of the original stonework has been put back, and um, it's now not in any danger of falling at all. But one of the four pillars had to be fabricated from scratch, but you cannot you cannot tell the difference at all. We we did it, and John Mott and Doug Gilpin, two significant architectural historians, were advising us on this, and we were very fortunate to have had their input, and we've got a very good contractor to do the work. So we'll tell the story a little bit in more detail for those who might want to come early next month and then um we'll go, go go to our meeting okay wonderful thank you thank you thank you congratulations congratulations on that movement forward there all right cheryl anything on our website um i've updated the about us list to include julianne and russell so welcome and uh double check that make sure i got it right 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 and Russell, as you get to uh, know uh, the folks on the commission and listen to the different uh, committees, we know you've not stated yet what committees you might want to be part of. Just uh, watch, look, and listen, and uh, let us know so we can we can be inclusive of you and whatever committees you want to be part of and join and support. Okay. Will do. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, wow. Okay. Any other announcements? I got one. Go ahead, Ann. Um, well, if David gets to talk about expensive projects in Fairfax City, I'll tell you about expensive history 
projects here in Vienna, we uh, we cannot get up to that amount of money, but we're spending over three hundred thousand dollars this year on reconnecting the bridge to the railroad, like it, the house, the Freeman Story Museum, to the WOD, where which it had from the very beginning, but the bridge fell down a few years ago because of all the runoff it was undermined so we are getting a real deluxe bridge it will not look historic it's a gigantic beam across the piney branch tributary and you know everybody looked at it and said that looks like a good scout project and over the last few years the price has skyrocketed and we luckily we've got a lot of grant money for it, and, but it's so if you drive by, you'll you know we're covered in black plastic, and then uh, not quite as expensive. But some of you guys, don't we have a meeting at the Freeman store on Monday for financial review? Um, we are starting a two-week um, uh, archaeology project with the Ottery Group. We've hired them to come and. Um, follow up on the ground penetrating radar we did we did um last year so uh that we could find something interesting so that's vienna's news okay very good very good and it's it's funny you're talking about bridges it reminds me brick historical society and i think it's in another week or two patrick o'neill is going to be doing a presentation on all of the bridges into Washington, D.C. So bridges oh, nice. apparently a, a, a hot topic right now. OK, any other uh, announcements? Bob, your hand, I think, is, is up. Um, yes, uh, the Savages Memorial won a third award in February. Oh, woo, 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 woo. Yes. Uh, from the uh, National Association of Remodeling Industry, um, sort of out mm -hmm. of the blue, uh, and the, the pro Mid-Atlantic division. So um, okay. they recognized it. That's nice. fantastic. That's awesome. Bob, would you, um, and actually we all should know this, if you could delineate the names of all the awards, who gave them and so forth, especially as I docent out there, I would love to be able to make reference to that. Sure. And I think it'd be good for the commission to know that, that your good work has been so, so honored. All right, I'll send you something. Perfect. That'd be nice for Thank the you. annual report too. Right? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah, probably the 23 annual report. I don't know when the, but some of the awards came in in 22, didn't they? Um, two in November and and one in February. That's oh, okay. going to take Bob way over 125 pages. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> I can <laughs> It's okay, you have to find another place to put it. I shortened mine to 116 <laughs> words. So there you go. Right, you're ahead of some of us. Okay. Hey, if I had more time, I'd write a shorter letter. <laughs> Any other uh, announcements out there? I've got a few, but I want to hear from you all first. Any other announcements? None, exactly none. had my hand up. Um, yes, in addition I'm sorry. To, it's okay. In addition to the symposium on Saturday, which, by the way, Patrick O'Neill is also speaking at. Yes, I remember um, that. Yeah. Um, the Mount Vernon Regional Historical Society is hosting Alice Reagan and Kanina Spalling on March 19th. Yes, and yes, they're yes, going yes. to talk about the Lorton Prisons book that they have just released. And uh, I think it will be very interesting. This was the book that Irma Clifton was going to write and never got to. And so they have, they lost almost all her papers. So they have reassembled all the photography. Oh. And everything. It's a really long job. And uh, so they're very proud of it. And it's going to be a very interesting talk because Alice Reagan is a specialist in um, women's history and African -American, his American history and the prison. And she does a bang up talk. So. She does. She does. She's spoken at our uh, 2020 history conference. She's I've listened to her many times. Alice and Kanina are just a little uh, dynamo combination. So, um, Sally, if you could put that out um, again, maybe I, I need to make some announcements. Sure. Sally, what time is that? It's going to be at two o'clock yeah, on Sunday, afternoon. March 19th at the Mount Vernon Government Center, which is the uh, center there on Parker's Lane where Dan Stork's offices are. All right, uh, let's see. Anybody else? Let me remind you that on the 20th of March, those of you that have had the wonderful opportunity to work with Valerie Bay, it's her retirement party at the Government Center between two to four that day. 
Um, uh, she has just been an absolute gift to this county. The work that she's done as a producer and as a photographer and her creativity and her patience, as Esther and I can certainly attest to in terms of some of the very early virtual conferences that we did together are is, is, is just I, I, I can't sing praises high enough for her. So the uh, 20th of March, that is a Monday, two to four in the afternoon. I know I've already mentioned that this is Women's History Month. Uh, Mrs. Robert Walker will be making at least five or six uh, appearances this month and a, a couple of them out at, at the Turning Point Suffragist uh, Memorial. And lastly, I do want to acknowledge a number of you have been in the, the newspapers and in the news and um, and stunts. Oh my gosh, I watched If You Lived Here all the way through just to be able to see your little summary of Vienna. It was very well done, very well done. Thank you. And then, of course, there was the um, uh, the Connection newspaper had done an article on the 22nd of February marking Black history, which was beautifully, beautifully written. And um, uh, Mercia, Mercia is somebody by Mercia who's, who's going to be doing a little bit more work uh, from us. And then the League of Women Voters is going to have a panel discussion a week from tonight. Uh, to talk about what women did to get the right to vote. And I, I will be on that panel discussion as well. And that will be a Zoom gathering. So if you're interested in that, go ahead and, and lean lean out. All right. Uh, anything else? Yes, Lynn, your your picture was in the paper. I saw that with a mask on, with a mask on, no less. Is that the no, one? No, I, I think you're recognized for your speaks. Uh, it was, I think the connection had a... Um, uh, the section on the 75th anniversary of the League of Women Voters. Oh, OK, that's the other. Th that's what I'm doing a week from tonight. Yeah. Yeah. The, so they had pictures of the memorial and your your picture is Miss Robert Walker was yeah. in there. So yeah, I did. you're in I, the I centerfold. Yeah. <laughs> like, congratulations. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Well, it's fun to do good things. As I told our um, county attorney who I happen to sit next to at the absolutely lovely African-American uh, gathering a couple of Fridays ago. Um, and I, I, I plugged the History Commission, you guys. I said, you know, that, that historic inventory is open. Uh, the AHI is open to be continued to be added on to. So please keep in touch. Uh, they were very happy to hear from the History Commission, having been already uh, introduced by uh, Carla, who is the lady that does the diversity and equity and inclusion piece. And uh, so I did get up and I acknowledged all of us, sat back down and um, discovered that I was sitting next to the county attorney who mm -hmm. I'd already had some conversations with last year about the whole awards and the distribution of funds and everything. And at the end of the evening, I was able to say to her with all true honesty that I have a far more passion about history than I do about county bureaucracy. <laughs> and we laughed about that. Mm -hmm. So. Anyway, I think we're, we're in good stead with our county attorney's office, which is good for Anne because that's where all of her good information is heading. Folks, we are not quite 45 Anne, minutes over time. Yes, yes, Janae, go ahead. We're up very quickly. Um, yesterday, there was a presentation at the Mott Center where they celebrated the Mott family, an African-American family, yeah. and there was a huge community that was there. So. Uh, Pat Harity did that and I met with them and we'll actually be starting tomorrow, starting a committee to start recording that community. So we're pretty excited excellent. about that. Excellent, excellent. And that's a committee. So I'll be that meeting with a lot of the Mott family members. Right, right, right. Um, and I think Minnie Harris from Clifton was part of that family too. She lived in that general area uh, yeah. uh, back, back in the day. Thank you for bringing that to our attention today. All right, folks. Hey, uh, hey Lynn. Yes. Then, uh, could, could you mention about the uh, luncheon at Mount Vernon? For, uh, oh, Glenn thank you Fatsinger. for reminding me. Yes, yeah. for those of you that remember Glenn Fatzinger, he is going to host a luncheon at Mount Vernon next week, uh, also, also on the 8th. Um, uh, no, it'll be, on, uh, March, it'll be on March 15th. March 15th, the, the yes. March 15th at noon, uh, $25 donation, includes lunch and so forth. You have to give them notice by March 8th uh, to, to attend. Mm -hmm. I think in, in the last couple of years, they hadn't had it, but I think three years ago, there were three or four other commissioners that attended also. So, Yeah, and it, it's a lovely, lovely event. Glenn has this um, 
kind of a scholarship set up in the name of his late wife, and uh, it is given to uh, young students at um, Nova College, and it's, for, it's, it's actually uh, yeah. very inspiring. Uh, yeah, for nursing students, and usually yes. the president of Northern Virginia Community College attends, and a lot of the, the head VIPs of the college comes too. So. Right. Right. So if you're interested in rosemary chicken and a good a good way to spend a lunch hour, that's that's the place to be on the 15th. Yeah. All right, folks, we went over our 930, but I have to say in light of everything that we had to cover tonight, I appreciate your patience, your focus and your good energy. Um, if there is nothing else to um, discuss, Tammy, was your hand just up? No. Mm -hmm. I just I thought I thought I caught it. All right. <laughs> I would like to uh, go ahead and adjourn our meeting this evening and we will see you again on the 5th of April, if not before. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for hard work this last month. Hopefully this month will be a little quieter. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Welcome, Russell. Thanks, everyone. Yes. Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. You Welcome, know, Juliana. Yes, yes. Welcome, Juliana. Um, how do I get into chat right now, Laura, to be able to, or to Stephanie, to be able to grab all those names that I need for the ad hoc? Ah, is this it? Do you see the okay. ribbon across the top of your screen? Yeah, I think I just got it up. Yeah. No, wait a minute. Uh, 